If you're looking to buy a CNC router that's affordable but capable, this could be the machine for you. This is the TTC 450 CNC router from Two Trees, and this is the optional 500 watt spindle. Today I'm going to be putting it through the ringer to find out if it's the machine to buy in 2024 or if it's just a $500 paperweight. Let's get started. As always, this is a complete and honest review. Two Trees sent me this machine for free with the understanding that I'm not going to pull any punches. As I mentioned, this is the TTC 450 CNC router made by Two Trees. It comes with an 80 watt spindle that can spin up to 7,000 RPM, but they also sent along this 500 watt spindle which can spin up to 12,000 RPM. It features a 460 by 460 millimeter work area with 80 millimeters of Z travel. It has an all aluminum frame, an MDF wasteboard with threaded inserts and end stops on every axis. It uses NEMA 17 stepper motors driving lead screws to move all the axes around except for the Z axis which uses a NEMA 23 stepper motor. The steppers are controlled by A4988 stepper drivers which aren't the best but they're a pretty common entry level stepper driver so nothing too concerning there. It came honestly extremely well packaged. It was a nice compact box with some really good foam to protect all the parts from any shipping damage. Same story for the 500 watt spindle, it came in a separate box but it was still protected by foam and everything was nice and secure. Assembly was very smooth. It took about an hour and a half and I was not rushing by any means. I like assembling things, so I just took my time working through the instructions, which are pretty decent as far as instructions go, but the real highlight of the assembly process was the labeling. I've been asking my wife for a label maker for Christmas for about 10 years now, and if she actually got me one, this is what she could expect. Every single package and part was labeled, but not just with a letter so you have to go back and check the table to see what part F is. No, everything had a full label with text saying what was in the package and how many there were. I feel like I can't fully express how well everything was labeled, but trust me, it was very nice and overall it made the assembly process completely pain free. So now that this thing is assembled, what are my initial thoughts? Well, right off the bat, I love the size. It's big and it should be able to cut a lot of good sized stuff, but it's also not enormous, so it will take up a ton of space in my shop. It's also fairly lightweight. Altogether, it's under 50 pounds, so if I need to move it around, I should be able to. The build quality seems sturdy. I mean, I won't really be able to tell until I get started cutting with it, but nothing immediately pops out as a concern. In terms of cable management, it's fairly well organized. Most of it came already in the drag chain, so all I had to do was mount the drag chain and connect a few cables. However, I do have two big complaints about the wiring harness itself. First, there isn't enough slack in the Z motor cable, which makes it kind of hard to connect. Second, I think the drag chain itself is designed upside down. As is, the Z axis wires have to cross the top part of the track, and they just love to catch on it as it's moving. I haven't had any real issues from it yet, but I do hope the company sees this and makes updates to their next version. It also has covers over both the Y-axis lead screws, but I'm not sure how I feel about that just yet. It'll either be awesome for keeping dust and chips out, or it'll be a great way to keep me from cleaning all the dust and chips out. The last thing to mention aesthetically is this handy dandy offline touchscreen controller. And from the initial setup, it seems to work as expected. All in all, this machine looks really good but that means absolutely nothing. What really matters is what this machine can do, so let's cut some shit. Now, the general rule of thumb is that hobby CNC machines should be able to handle a depth of cut at one half the bit diameter through wood. So for an eighth inch bit, that's about 1.5 millimeters deep. Being the overachiever that I am, I went ahead and started with a two millimeter depth of cut at 300 millimeters per minute. This first cut was in a spare chunk of butcher block that I had laying around, and for the paths, I was doing less than 50% step over. Overall, it went fairly well, but it definitely struggled when doing the contour operations at 100% step over. For the second cut in Walnut, I went a bit shallower at 1.5 millimeters depth of cut at 300 millimeters per minute. And I noticed a bit of chatter when cutting from back to front, but not so much from front to back, which is weird. The accuracy seemed okay overall, but the chatter definitely brought down the finish quality. 
I think with a few tweaks to the feed rate and spindle speed, I should be able to get some nice cuts at that depth. Next, I tried cutting some white HDPE at 1.5 millimeters depth of cut, and it didn't go very well at first. So I slowed it down to about 200 millimeters per minute with a spindle speed of 8,000 RPMs, and the resulting cut looked really nice. Now, eighth inch bits are fine, but they're not really long enough to cut through anything thicker than like a quarter of an inch. So I decided to swap in my quarter inch collet so I could use some of my nicer bits. The first bit I tested was my quarter inch O flute end mill, number 51377 from Amana Tools, in some walnut. I started with two millimeters depth of cut at my usual 300 millimeters per minute, and that was definitely way too aggressive. Obviously, the results weren't very good. There was a whole bunch of chatter that caused a bunch of tear out. You'd think I would have learned not to cut too deep on this machine, but here I am, still doing stupid shit. At this point, I am confident that this machine can handle plastics and wood just fine, assuming you use appropriate settings. But before I swap it over to the bigger 500 watt spindle, I wanna just send it and see if it can handle aluminum with this same quarter inch O flute end mill. I set it up to cut 0.15 millimeters deep at 800 millimeters per minute to maintain a good chip load and... No, no, definitely not. Yeah, it's not even close to being able to mill aluminum with the 80 watt spindle, even going super shallow on the cut. Right off the bat, the bit went crazy and I had to hit the e-stop. Speaking of segues, this e-stop is either in the perfect spot or the worst possible spot, but I'm not sure which. I have accidentally hit this thing four times now. Luckily, only one of which was during an actual cutting operation. So it's very easily accessible, but it's also in the perfect spot to accidentally rest your hand on it and set it off. Anyways, that's a pretty decent amount of testing with this 80 watt spindle. I'll come back and give another once over at the end of this testing, but for now, I wanna swap in the 500 watt spindle and see how it holds up. Installation is a little bit more complicated than the original spindle, but it's still not too bad. Once I had it installed, I powered it on, turned up the speed, activated it, and it died almost immediately. I reset the machine, power cycled it, sent commands, anything I could think of, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get this spindle to turn on again. I did a little digging and it turns out that the relay that's used to switch the spindle on and off had completely burned out. I'm not sure why or how, but the spindle controller no longer works at all. As frustrating as this is, it's actually a great opportunity for me to test out their customer service. So I reached out to them with my predicament and they responded that day and said they were sending me a replacement power supply and relay and all I had to do was swap them in for the old ones. A couple days later, I got the replacements, swapped them in, powered it up and it immediately burned out again. So I reached out to Two Trees again and they responded right away that their development team had found an issue with the power supplies that was causing the relay to burn out and that they were sending me a new design. This is actually a great example of why honest product reviews are so important. I firmly believe that a critical review is far more helpful to companies than a falsely positive one. If a company truly cares about providing a quality product, they will actively seek out critical feedback. Anyways, after swapping in the third power supply, I was finally able to finish an operation with this 500 watt spindle. My first cut with this spindle was a simple facing operation using a quarter inch flat end mill running at 100 millimeters per minute with a 1.5 millimeter depth of cut. It handled that with ease, so I decided to push it a bit further, upping the depth of cut to two millimeters and the feed rate to 800 millimeters per minute. That jump was a little aggressive as the machine started to struggle slightly, so I dialed it back to 500 millimeters per minute and it performed much better. One thing to mention here is that the tram seems to be off a little bit and basically that means that the spindle isn't exactly perpendicular to the face of the workpiece. So you end up with these little ridges on facing operations. There's all kinds of eccentric nuts on the Z axis for adjusting the V wheels, but I don't think any of them are intended for adjusting the tram. Anyways, moving on with the testing, I used the same settings on some plywood to make a little step stool for my daughter, but after starting the cut, I realized I hadn't set the bottom height correctly, so it didn't go all the way through the plywood. I tried stopping it to fix the bottom height and start over, but for some reason, the machine started locking up on the Y axis and it completely lost the previous origin. 
I don't know what caused the gantry to lock up. I was worried the lead screws got covered in sawdust, causing them to bind. But the next time I tried to move the gantry, it moved just fine. So we'll see if it happens again. Anyway, I did my best to get the bit back to the previous origin and kicked off the operation. This time it went really well until it made its way through the plywood and the offcut came loose and locked up the gantry. Just another part ruined by my own incompetence. Now before I call testing a wrap, I want to give this machine another crack at alumina. This time I was extra conservative and took it really slow and it actually went pretty well. This cut was at 400 millimeters per minute and 0.15 millimeters depth of cut with tapping fluid applied every so often. But I ended up bumping the speed up to 800 millimeters per minute and that helped to smooth it out a little bit. I was going to make a really ugly bottle opener from this 10 millimeter thick aluminum, but I ended up shocking my machine with static from my shop back hose. I have got to learn to stop touching my work pieces with my shop back because I have shocked several of my CNC routers now, triggering a host of different errors. I swear, most of the issues I've had with this CNC machine and CNC machines in general are my own fault. But mistakes aside, I was really just testing out this machine to see what it could do and I was pretty happy with the results. To sum up my testing on this machine real quick, I tested the 80 watt spindle with butcher block, walnut, HDPE, and acrylic and with the right settings, it was able to handle all those materials just fine. Aluminum, not a chance. The story was much the same for the 500 watt spindle with the exception that I was able to cut through aluminum at about 0.15 millimeters at a time. Overall, I really like the size of this machine. The assembly was super quick and easy. It's very user friendly and the customer support is obviously great. A few of the downsides would include the placement of the e-stop being a little bit unfortunate, the drag chain on the gantry being upside down, and the fact that there's no obvious way to adjust the tram of the spindle. If I were to give this machine a rating, I'd give it a seven with the 80 watt spindle and an 8.75 with the 500 watt spindle. I'm not a huge fan of the 80 watt spindles in general. I'm way too impatient to chew through wood at the rate those spindles can handle. But if you don't mind taking it slow with your cuts and a large work area is what you're after, this is a great machine. But if you have an extra hundred odd dollars lying around, I definitely recommend it upgrading to the 500 watt spindle. It's powerful enough to handle hardwood and even aluminum, making it a much better choice if you wanna push the capabilities of this machine. For $500 all in, this machine could really be a worthy addition to your shop, provided you aren't an idiot like me and know how to actually operate it. It's also important to keep in mind that this machine isn't intended to cut through three quarters of an inch of plywood in a single pass. It's for entry level hobbyists and it's priced to reflect that. Anyways, if you found this review useful or if there's anything I forgot to cover, let me know down in the comments so I can make sure to include it in my next review. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.